Well, hello there once again, fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. Well, here I am again back with another one of my back to basic videos. This time we're going to be talking about multi-position rotary switches. Um, these are a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to just uh, explain some things that are different between what we already talked about on the push button switches and the toggle switches. Obviously, the main point being that these have um, multiple positions. But before we get started, I would like to just remind you guys once again that I am not a spokesperson for SimVim X or Real Sim Control, and I do not represent them. I'm just uh, providing this information from my point of view and my understanding of the concepts. Uh, the website, uh, as, as is going to be shown, is the way it appeared on June 10th, 2024, and the plugin version is version 2.21a. All right, so let's go over to the website real quick, just for a minute here. And uh, we're going to go over to the hardware section and we're going to go to rotary switches. So right here, I, as I always tell you guys, I highly recommend that you come to the website and you read everything there is uh, regarding the particular kind of component that you're planning to use or connect so that you can learn everything about it that, you know, maybe things that I might miss during my explanation. So as you can see, they show right here just uh, all kinds of different switches that there is. And then they show the wiring, of course. It's always very important to see the wiring. And it's very simple, actually. You know, it's just basically uh, the, the pole is going to go to the ground. And then the throws uh, are going to go to the different pins, either directly on the Arduino or on a multiplexer, which is very recommended because, like I said, these things can take up a lot of pins. So you can run out of pins real quick, especially if you're going to use, like, let's say, five or six multi-position switches with, you know, seven or eight positions each that's a ton of pins so highly recommended to use multiplexers and i am going to show the wiring of a couple of them here during today's video so yeah and then they show you you know how you can do different things you know including a, a flap lever with using uh, either a multi-position switch or many push button switches which is pretty much the same thing all you're doing is pressing one of the buttons you know at, at, at a time so that's what that is and then they also talk about um, uh, these are called uh, hex or bin binary coded switches or hex switches I believe they're called also hex code switches so I've never used any of these but basically these can give you a lot of positions uh, with a few inputs because it's going to be a hex code or a binary you know code instead of the actual number of contacts it's just going to use them to determine the position of the switch depending on if you know, either some of them are ones or zeros. But like I said, I've never used any of these, so I'm not going to go into those. And then right here, they show you how you can even make a, uh, basically a voltage divider using resistors with a multi-position switch. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated also, and I have not seen the need for myself to use it yet. So I'm not going to be talking about that as well, but I highly recommend that you guys come and read it if you want to learn how to use it. Okay, but now we're going to go over to my overhead here and we're going to just see different types of switches that there is. So, like I said, they come in many different shapes and sizes as you saw on the website there and also on my table here. These are pretty much all the same size physically, um, but there is a lot of differences between them. And that's one thing you need to look for when you buy these switches. So, this one here, for example, is a, it's an example of a very basic uh, switch. I believe this one has eight positions. And so you can see it has one pole only, which is where the ground is going to be. And then it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is eight positions. Um, and each one of these will take up one pin on the Arduino or on the multiplexer if you do it that way, which is what I recommend. And I'm actually going to show you um, that I'm going to connect one of those eight position switches a little bit later on. Now this one here. This is a little bit, it's, it looks similar, but it's very different because this one has two poles, as you can see, and it has, I believe it's 12 positions on this one. So what this tells me is that basically you can have two different things, two different functions assigned if you connect all these connections here. Uh, and when you throw the switch, when you go through the motion of the switch, you're going to actually be... Uh, making contact with two different ones and usually it's the opposite ones and you can actually see right here where the contact makes connection with one of the pins so right now it looks like it's touching on this one right here so as you go through the 
through the different uh, positions, which is it's very hard to turn these without a, a knob on them. Um, you know, you're going to be basically rotating through all the different positions on this side. And then on the opposite side, it'll be the same thing. It's going to just be making contact through all the different ones. All right. So you can assign two different things to those. Um, this one here is the same thing. I'm not sure why I have two of them. Oh, probably just because I have a knob on them. Um, this one here is uh, very similar, but this is a plastic one. And it also has two poles, as you can see. And it has three contacts on each one. So this one is much easier to understand, right? So if you wanted to assign two different functions to the three different positions on this switch, you can do that. And then when you turn it, you're going to basically just be connecting you know, like right there would be connecting with the first one here and then the first one over here. And then when you go to the middle, it'll be the middle one here and the middle one there. And when you go to the last one, it'll be the last one here and the last one here. So it's kind of like opposite. It's going to be going like this kind of at the same time. All right. So that's a two pole with three contacts. And this one here, it's a little bit more complicated than that one. This one is a four pole with three contacts each. But this one, it actually shows you uh, which ones go together. So you can see that from this pole, it has little lines going to these three. From that pole, it has lines going to those three and for that one as well and for this one as well. So that kind of makes it easier to, to know, you know, what you're gonna be connecting if you were to use this one. So with this one, you can actually connect four different functions uh, to do it at the same time as you're flipping through the three different positions of the switch. So there's that. All right. And speaking of knobs, as you can see, you can have many different types of knobs. They sell, you know, very little ones. They sell big ones. Um, I've got some like this one here that uh, it has a little line on it. Then there's some like this one right here, which looks like a very old appliance or something. It looks like something from the 50s. And then we got this big one here, which is, uh, this is kind of what I've been using right now in my um, make believe setup over here and then uh, oh, this this one here is the same as this other one that I already showed all right so now I got rid of all the all the junk here and we're going to go into the actual connection of these switches here so as you can see this one here is a four position switch um, this one also has two poles and four connections like the other one that I showed a little while ago but I've only connected one so obviously one of the very important things with rotary switches is that you need to make sure the wiring is in the correct order. You know, because like for example, right here I have green, white, blue, and yellow. So when I connect them over here, um, I decided to connect these on A8, A9, A10, and A11. I have to make sure that they're in the same order as they are here. Um, otherwise when you're going through your switch, everything's gonna be jumping all over the place because they're not gonna be the correct pins. So that's very important. Over here on this one, I've decided to connect this to a multiplexer. So obviously right here, you can see that the switch order is uh, as you, when you start over on this side, this is gonna be red, white, yellow, green, and blue. So over here, you need to make sure that is red, white, yellow, green, and blue, which it is. Obviously, and you know that it goes in ascending order. So when we go right now to to assign some of these functions to rotary switches um, they start obviously at the lower number for example on the multiplexer it'll be pin 0 through pin 4 for a 5 position switch over here is A8, A9, A10 and A11 so it's always going to go in ascending order and uh, like I said it needs to be in the correct order all right now I'm going to go ahead and assign a, another one here that I already took the liberty of pre-wiring because this is an eight position rotary switch. Um, but you can see that I have this all soldered on already and everything is already all nice, ready to go. I have the ground pin right here, which we are gonna assign or connect to our common ground right here. All right, so another quick refresher on multiplexers here. Obviously, you know, we have the data bus here or the address bus is S0, S1, S2, and S3. And then I have my wires over here. And if you all remember from the previous videos, um, I have, you know, my little uh, distribution hub right here. So all we're going to do is basically connect S0 through S3 into our little hub here. Oops. There we go. 
So luckily with these rigid wires, it's a little bit easier to do it. So now the signal pin over here, the white one, that's going to be the one that's going to go into our Arduino to the pin that we're going to assign a multiplexer on. So for the purposes of this one, it's going to be on pin number 53. So I'm putting it right there. And then obviously all we have is the ground and then the, the 5 volts to supply to the multiplexer. So we're going to connect the 5 volts there to our main power rail. And then we're going to connect the ground to our ground rail right there. So that's it. That's pretty much all you need to do. And as you can see, that's why it's recommended to use multiplexers because this one already took eight pins. You know, so if I would have taken all 16 pins with two of these, it's obviously better to use two, uh, a multiplexer rather than take up 16 pins on your Arduino and then have the problem of running out of pins. Okay, so now that we got all that connected, we have to kind of remember where we put them. So remember the fourth position rotary switch is on A0 through A11 directly on the Arduino. Uh, this five position switch is on multiplexer number eight, uh, positions zero through four on the multiplexer. And then the eight position rotary switch is gonna be on multiplexer um, pin number 53, positions zero through seven. So we have to keep that in mind so that right now when we go to the website to assign them, we're going to be able to remember where to put them. So remember, the first thing we need to do is tell the configurator that we have some multiplexers connected, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and put uh, multiplexers here on pin number eight, which is the one that I have on my uh, test panel there that I always have connected. And then we're going to put another one on pin number 53, which is where I put that eight position rotary switch one. So now we have to decide what we're going to assign to everything. On the four position uh, switch, we're going to assign it to the EFIS map mode uh, for the 737. As you guys know, I always use that as an example, but it's the same for anything. So if we go here, we go to select where the EFIS is right here. And let me just move this out of the way. So we're going to use the EFIS map mode right here. And we're going to put that, um, that's the one that's going to be directly on the Arduino. So we need to actually get out of this and go to direct input. So we choose the rotary switch on the EFIS map mode and we select uh, A8 over here. So A8 and it's going to take up 8, 9, 10 and 11 because it's going to be four positions. And I think I already mentioned this before, the configurator already knows how many positions it needs to take you know so you just need to make sure you connect them the right way so that's already assigned there okay and then we're going to go over to our multiplexers so let's go ahead and do uh, the one on number eight first so we'll go to the one on eight and then we're going to select uh that's the five position one so we're going to do the ifis uh, display selector switch on that one so if we go right here Okay, so we're going to do this one here because it has five positions. So you select that one and it, remember it starts on pin zero. So you put it there and it takes up one, two, three, four, five positions. Okay, so now we select uh, multiplexer number 53 and we're going to use the, we're going to actually use the EFIS uh, map range for that one because that one has eight positions. So it works out perfectly. So it's going to be a rotary switch. So you see right here, it gives you the option to use a hex or a coded switch, a coded binary switch, but we're going to use a regular rotary switch. So we select that and then remember it starts on pin zero. So we put it on there and you can see that it takes up eight positions all the way to seven here from zero to seven. All right. So that's pretty much it for all our assignments. So we're going to go ahead and save the configuration tell it it's okay to leave and then we're just going to call it data it's going to be inside our explain resources plugins simvimx folder like always and so we save it all right so now we jump into our simulator here and the first thing we need to do is reload the configuration to make sure that we load the the one that we just created right now all right so the first one we're going to test is going to be our four position switch here which is going to be for the EFIS map mode which is this one right here so all you're going to need to see is the map in order for it 
the changes to be visible. So right now I am in map and then if I go to the right, so this is the fla flight plan page. Then I go back to map, oops, and then we go down to VOR and then we go to approach. So you can see that it's working perfectly going through the four different positions on it, right? All right, so now we're going to test the five position switch here, which is the display unit uh, selector here. So I don't know if maybe I should move this a little bit to this side. So you can see the changes. There we go. So right now we are on normal, as you can see right here. It's on normal. So I'm going to go to the left, and that's going to be the outboard PDF, then back to normal. Then this is the inboard PDF. So this is the engine primary instruments. This is the PFD and then the MFD. So you can see that that one is also working properly. And then we get, we end up back in normal again. All right. And last but not least, we're going to use our eight position rotary switch here. So in order to do that, we need to get back here. So you can see. So you're going to be looking at the map range uh, change and then you're going to be seeing this switch moving as well. All right, so we're going to go through the different uh, the whole range of this switch. So right now we're on the five mile range. So we're going to go to 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, 320, and 640. I know it's hard to see the switch moving, but you can obviously see that the navigation display is definitely changing going through the different steps. So it looks like all the switches are working properly. All right, so there we go. That is how easy it is to assign and connect and use uh, multi-position rotary switches, whether it be connected directly to the Arduino or using multiplexers, which is the most recommended method. Um, you know, but like I said, the most important things to keep in mind is one, that you cannot use inversion with multi-position switches. Two, you cannot do multiple functions for each uh, switch. So you can only use one. And then the third and not least, uh, you need to make sure the wiring order is correct. Or else when you're flipping through the switch, you're going to have all kinds of random selections of whatever it is that you assign to that switch. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So hopefully this video um, helped clear up any confusion or doubts that anybody might have had. And if you were not using any of these switches because they seem confusing because of the number of connections, well, now you know that is not that bad. It's actually quite simple. And that's all I have for this video then. So thank you guys very much for watching. And like always, I'll see you on the next one.